Hey everyone, you're looking at one of the best and brightest TVs I've ever tested. This is the Samsung QN90B QLED TV. But is it as good as those OLED TVs? Let's dive in. Let's get something out of the way first though. This TV is not cheap. That might fall a little bit later in the year toward Black Friday, but again, this is a high-end television designed to compete with those OLED TVs and the best televisions from other manufacturers. Now the QN90B series comes in 43, 50, 55, 65, 75, 85, so a lot of size range there in a flagship television. So price out of the way, what are you getting for that extra money? On the QN90B, it's basically brightness. This TV is so bright that it actually improves the look of HDR as well as works in a really bright room very well. So let's say you have some windows shining in, you can't really do anything about that ambient light. This is a great TV for those types of lighting situations. The TV also has excellent contrast, so it's able to get really bright without spoiling the darker parts of the picture. I'll get a little bit more into picture quality later, but know that that's really the main thing that separates this television from the cheaper models on the market. So let's start with design. The Samsung TV actually looks the part of being pretty expensive. The stand here is a really nice kind of curved look. Samsung calls it a bending floating stand, and it does seem to suspend the panel above the furniture or whatever you have. Of course, you can wall mount this television if you want. Really thin frame, almost an all picture look like most TVs these days, but since it has full array local dimming and a complex backlight, it is thicker than a lot of the other TVs on the market. Not a huge deal unless you're looking at it really from the extreme angles, but again, still very sleek overall. Samsung also does a good job of minimizing the cables. There's a nice cable management system along the back here so you can run your HDMI, your power cables, and keep those nice and tucked away. Another thing that sets this Samsung apart from the rest is the remote. It's hands down my favorite remote on a television. I really like the feel. It's a nice small remote. The buttons are well designed and it's also got a really nice rounded look with a metallic finish. Now, the clicker has these shortcut buttons for Netflix and a few other streaming services, but they're not garish and bright and the overall design really looks very good. I also appreciate that the volume control and the channel controls are these kind of like flippy little things instead of a standard button, so a nice little difference there. Of course, there's a mic, so you can use voice control features on this remote as well. Samsung does include Alexa and Google Assistant, as well as its Bixby voice feature. You can use those by talking into the remote, saying uh, you know commands for searching, for turning on your smart TV devices, things like that. And of course, Bixby is the least popular of those. Wouldn't recommend it, but having both Amazon and Google in this te television built in is really cool. This TV also has the ability to listen for a wake word without using the remote. So you can say that word out into thin air and the TV will respond without having to speak into the clicker. Of course, you can turn that off if you want to improve your privacy a little bit around the house. Another thing I like about the remote is that it has rechargeable batteries, so you can plug in a USB if you want to top it off. But if you don't have a USB handy, you can actually flip it over and use the solar panel on the back. That's right, this thing will recharge via light in the room or even sunlight outside if you want to bring it on the patio. I don't recommend that. Samsung also says new for this year, these remotes can recharge via RF harvesting. So if there's like Wi-Fi in the house, apparently they can harvest some of that and get a little bit of extra wattage to top them off. So I don't know, I didn't test it, but it sounds pretty cool. Either way, you'll be able to get this thing charged up and not have to worry about replacing any of those little batteries inside the remote. Samsung also redesigned its menu system this year and I'm not a huge fan. This thing takes up the whole screen before it kind of popped out from the bottom. But more than that, there's just a lot of stuff on here that makes it pretty difficult to find what you want to get to. So we'll start with this big thing along the top, which can be a sponsored ad. You can see it's sponsored by Alexa right now. The apps, which are the thing that I care about most, are kind of along the middle here. And you can actually get them arranged how you want. You know, it's got all the standard apps you could want for streaming and that kind of thing. But the rest of the screen is kind of random. This on now goes to Samsung's own sort of service. Uh, that's their free TV service called Samsung TV Plus. Uh, there's all this free live TV stuff on here and it actually kind of promotes this service a little bit too much. Now, most menus also have access to settings and things like that. To get to that, you gotta go over here to the left-hand side. You can see there's a brand new nav up here. You can start by search 
which is pretty straightforward. You can search for TV shows and movies. There's also an ambient mode, which can turn on the TV uh, after you turn it off and give you something on the screen. That includes artwork, things like that. Uh, below that is a brand new feature that I really like on Samsung's 2022 TVs. That's the gaming hub. Let's check it out. So Samsung's Game Hub is unique to this television. No other manufacturer has it, and it incorporates a bunch of different cloud gaming services, including Stadia, GE Force Now, and Xbox Game Pass. So you can go down here and actually include your Xbox Game Pass if you log into your account and game directly on the television with a controller. So I've connected this Bluetooth controller to the uh, Xbox Game Pass. Now, don't get confused because I actually have an Xbox Series X console plugged in. I don't need to do that now. I can actually go to Game Pass. We'll see what happens here. So you can see I'm controlling everything via the controller here that I've linked to this. It'll also work with a PlayStation or third-party Bluetooth controller. These are some games that I've been playing recently on Xbox Game Pass. Again, this is just the television over the cloud. So one thing to note with all cloud gaming services, you want to have as much bandwidth as possible. So I've plugged in an Ethernet cable here uh, into the back. It's a wired connection. Samsung recommends doing that. Um, so if you're using Wi-Fi, you might have a little bit of delay. Samsung also says it's around 50 megabits per second at least. Least. This connection is much faster than that, and I had really good results. So when I played Halo, one of the flagship games uh, for Xbox Game Pass, I really noticed the only difference between this and playing on the console was the graphics quality. So it doesn't have that super crisp graphics, doesn't look quite as good, but the response times were actually pretty good just in the campaign mode here. So it does respond really well when I'm uh, going in uh, fighting or even you know riding a vehicle. So long story short, it's a pretty cool way to get access to those cloud games and play, um, you know, again, without having to connect the console. So of course this TV is well equipped for gaming via standard consoles as well. The round back you'll find four 4K 120 Hertz compatible inputs, which is an improvement in previous years. Samsung only had a couple of those. This one has all four on there. It's also compatible with variable refresh rate. And of course I have an Xbox console connected here. I'll show you there's a new game hub for console gamers that really shows you some of those features in action. So one of the things that Samsung has added in the last couple of years is something it calls a game bar, and that displays all the functions that you expect from high-end consoles like a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. So with my Xbox connected here, I can long press on the play pause button and summon the game bar. One of the new things for 2022 is there's different picture modes. So you can cycle between standard, RPG, RTS, first-person shooter, sports, and custom. One of the things I noticed, you might be able to see here on the screen, there really isn't that much of a difference between these in terms of picture quality, but I noticed with sports, you do get a little bit more of an accurate picture. So you can see that the greens get a little bit more natural when you're playing Assassin's Creed here. Custom allows you to go in and adjust some, some other settings, including brightness, contrast, your standard picture settings. So that's neat to have, but overall, I would have liked to see a little bit more difference in the picture quality between these various modes. Now, cycling over here, you can also set input lag to different settings. Right now, it's pegged to fastest, and one of the things that you want to know is that the input lag on this TV, really good, about 10 milliseconds uh, I measured with 4K HDR and 1080p, so that's great. A couple of the other settings that are available uh, in the game mode, you can turn on and off smoothing, but one of the main things that I like about it is along the bottom here, you can see it, it displays the current frames per second. So it'll show you when you're in 4K 120 hertz mode, like I am right now, you want to maximize that picture quality. It's a nice buttery picture. And it also tells you when your HDR is on, which is great, because of course you want to game in HDR when you can. And finally, I recommend using VRR when available on the gaming. This one displays that FreeSync Premium is available. So all that is really cool to know, kind of reassuring that you're getting the best uh, gaming experience. Now compar compared to some other TVs, the gaming modes on these weren't quite as accurate. Again, we saw some of those neonish colors um, we also saw a little bit of false contouring artifacts in some of the areas that weren't present on some of the other higher end TVs we tested, but overall gaming looks really good on this TV and again it supports all the latest features. So beyond gaming, let's talk about picture quality in general for TV shows and movies. I compared the QN90B to a couple of the other TVs that are in the high end of the market, including an LG OLED TV and a Sony TV that uses a similar technology for the backlight. Those are called mini LED. Now, real quick, one of the step ups on this TV is that mini LED backlight. It allows the TV to get really bright and also have really small local dimming zones. 
Now Samsung doesn't tell me exactly how many local dimming zones there are, but it has improved the technology this year to reduce blooming. So in that side-by-side -side comparison, I'll put up something that has a dark background and a really bright thing against that, and the blooming, which is sometimes the stray illumination that can leak from the bright into the dark area, is really minimal on this TV. That's especially impressive because it's so darn bright. I measured about 1900 nits, which is really, really bright. One of the brightest TVs I've seen in the most accurate picture mode on this Samsung. For comparison, that's two or three times as bright as the brightest OLED TV. Now that brightness really translates well with high dynamic range material, especially something outside, natural scenes, something really bright and well lit. For more theatrical content, however, I did prefer the look of the OLED TV. One of the things that it does better is it really shows those shadows, keeps them nice and dark, keeps them theatrical and dramatic, whereas sometimes on a TV, even a really good LED TV like this, you see a little bit brighter shadows, a little bit less of that contrast and punch that you want with a highly theatrical movie. That said, the QN90B still looks spectacular with movies and TV shows, and again, one of the best TVs I've tested. I did notice a couple things that I didn't love about the QN90B's picture. One is that the color accuracy wasn't quite as good as some of the other high-end TVs that I've seen. It was cast a little bit blue or a little bit green depending on the color temperature. So at the end of the day, it's not something that really ruined the picture, but again, compared to those other TVs, something to keep an eye out for. The other thing, of course, compared to OLED TVs was off-angle viewing. So if you're at a seat that's not the sweet spot right in front of the screen, you'll see sometimes that the image will get a little bit faded and washed out on an LED TV, QLED TV, like this QN90B. An OLED TV, on the other hand, when you watch it from extreme angles, will stay nice and sharp. You'll get a really good color fidelity, good black levels and color. So again, if you're watching from those extreme angles at the edge of the couch, you're not gonna get as good of a picture on a QLED TV like this compared to an OLED TV. So beyond those little nitpicks, the picture on the Samsung QN90B was excellent overall. Really like how this TV performs, and again, that brightness, a big advantage over OLED TVs. At the end of the day, though, I still like OLED TVs just a little bit better, again, for that extra contrast and pop in theatrical movies and TV shows. So to sum it all up, the Samsung QN90B has excellent picture quality. It's pretty expensive, but you get a lot of great features, including that gaming hub. Now, if you want those extra features, you don't want to pay quite as much. Samsung's other TVs do offer them, but again, the step up on the QN90B is that excellent brightness, that really good uh, blooming control and black levels for an overall picture that's just slightly worse than OLED. So that's a quick look at Samsung's QN90B QLED TV. I'm David Katzmeyer from CNET.